God is good, and Pantheon Rise of the Fallen now has full details on all three of the healing classes. And in earlier videos, I have broken down the Cleric and the Druid. Both are very exciting classes that thousands of players are going to be maining. However, the time has come. It is time to talk about the Shaman, a very awesome sounding healing class. Real quick, if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing as here at the Nathan Napalm channel we focus on Pantheon related content and my main goal is to keep you, the Pantheon community, entertained with content consumption to keep you busy until launch. At launch, I will focus more on in-game content, exploring the world, the level up process, quest progression, tips, hints, and highlights of awesome in-game happenings. Join now and let's build the Pantheon community together. But without further delay, let's talk about the Shaman. First, I want to discuss the interesting information about what a Shaman is in Terminus. The Shaman lives in every age at once. Using Second Sight, they can sense the energy woven throughout the fabric of Terminus' past. They use this power to form boons or banes, buffs or debuffs. The Shaman group role will be healer, support, and utility. Their combat resources are mana and vision. Vision can be generated through healing, and as it accumulates, their spell casting speed increases up to a certain percentage and is represented as an eye opening. When it opens all the way, it is at max, full percentage of spell casting gain. I love the visual representation when done in games. Final Fantasy XIV has this, and it's a lot of fun. The Shaman will be wearing cloth, leather, and light mail. Their available weapons are one hand blunt, two hand blunt, or one hand piercing with shield. Now let's get to the abilities. Chase the Wind. This is a wind boon. The Shaman summons wind to push the Shaman forward, increasing their movement speed. It sounds like it applies to the Shaman only and not as a speed buff to the group like the Druid gets is worth mentioning. The Primordial Bonds, a passive that allows the healing abilities to heal the Shaman for a percentage as the Shaman heals others. Keeper of Elemental Mysteries, a passive that sounds like it will coincide with the Wizard and other elemental casting types with the actual casting abilities and, and, and boons of the Shaman as well. Basically what this does is it causes a percentage bonus to the Shaman's healing abilities for each elemental school active to an offensive target such as water, fire, earth, wind, animus, and ancestral. Ancient Focus, a passive that allows a shaman to regenerate HP and mana at the same rate as they do out of battle as they do in battle. This will be very helpful. Age Walker's Companion, the shaman's pet. It is a spirit wolf cub or spirit bear cub. The spirit pet will stay at the shaman's side but will not interact with enemies or the environment at first. At level 10, however, the shaman can take their pet through a rite of passage and the cub will turn into its adult form. Then the spirit pet will aid in battle at the command of the shaman. It will grow in strength as it is used, gaining more unique abilities as it does. Age Walker's Gift a passive that upon death, the shaman will turn into a ghostly state for a certain duration before returning to their bind location. While being all ghastly and stuff, the shaman will be undetectable to enemies and can interact with their own physical corpse by dragging it to a different location within so many meters of where they died. When this effect ends, the Shaman's defensive target will get a percentage of their max health and mana regenerated. However, the Shaman cannot drag the corpses of other players, only their own. But the Shaman can use Part the Veil while in Ghost State, so let's take a look at Part the Veil, shall we? Part the Veil ability allows the Shaman to guide the spirit of a fallen ally back to their physical body, restoring them to life. So this is the Shaman's res. I would like to mention it doesn't have to be used while the Shaman is dead in ghost form, only that it can be used while in this form, and depending if the Shaman is in ghost form or not changes what it does. So this ability will cause resurrect and sickness and cannot be used while the Shaman is in combat. That's if the Shaman's alive. Also while using this ability as we talked about before, 
if you use it during Age Walker's gift in ghost form, it does change what happens. For example, when the shaman is in ghost form, part the veil will restore the fallen ally to life with full health and mana and can be used in combat. When used in this way, the ally does not cause res sickness. Very interesting if, say, you have two healers in a group, uh, a cleric and a shaman, the tank goes down, the mob then kills the cleric, then takes down the shaman, then begins attacking the DPS, the DPS begins kiting it, the shaman raises the cleric to full HP and mana, the cleric raises the tank and begins pumping heals to the DPS kiting it, the tank begins trying to gain aggro and the shaman's ghost form wears off and the cleric raises the shaman. Shaman gets back to business, you see? It's very, very, very useful. Primal Fury. This is a boon of the ancestral type. It fills the ally with Primal Fury, which increases their critical strike chance of physical and magical abilities by a percentage, and every successful crit will further increase their crit strike chance for up to a percentage of the duration of the effect. Grip of the Crags Another boon of the ancestral type imbues the shaman with the members of the party with the nature of the mountain dwellers. Remember, the shaman can see into ancestral paths. This increases the strength and stamina by a certain amount for a certain amount of time. Reptilian Bell, another boon, this time of the Animus type, imbues the shaman and party members with the nature of the dragons of the sea. This increases poison and disease resistance by an amount and the natural health regeneration rate by a percentage for a certain amount of time. Mark of the Fireclaw. Another boon. This one is of the fire type. This imbues the shaman and party members with the nature of the dragons of the air, increasing fire and nature resistance by a certain amount, and agility and dexterity by a certain amount, for a certain amount of time. Sky Mains Memento. Another boon. This one for the wind type. This fills your ally with the nature of ancient sky mains, increasing attack speed by percentage for a certain amount of time. Interlocking stones. Another boon, this one for earth type. Shaman creates a network of interlocking stones around themselves and the members of the group, increasing armor class for all by a certain amount for a certain duration. Adept's Theory. The Shaman peers deeply into the ancient mysteries of Terminus, increasing wisdom by a certain amount for a certain duration. Cleansing Flame. This will cleanse an ally of poison or disease. Walk the ages. The shaman marks a moment in time, leaving their spirit where they are currently standing for an amount of time. When the shaman uses this ability again, they will instantly return to the marked location. However, it cannot be used to cross zone lines. So a teleport to get out of danger and all kinds of other useful situations for specific mechanics, I'm sure. This one will be a lot of fun to see how the players use it for all kinds of things. Now let's talk about the healing abilities for the Shaman. After all, they are a healer. Mantle of Mist. This is a boon of the water type. It heals the ally over time, recovering up to a percentage more health with each pulse or kick the longer the effect lasts. Gift of the Rainlands. This is another healing boon of the water type again. The Shaman sends forth a rush of restorative waters, healing each member of the group over time for a certain duration. If the Mantle of Mist is active on the target, the healing pulses of this ability will critically heal. Very powerful. Hand of Avelu. Primal Oath Water Type. This amplifies a water boon, as was both just mentioned on an ally creating a surge of healing waters that directly heals the Shaman's target ally for a moderate amount and the members of the group for a small amount. Gate of Forgotten Eras. This is a boon of ancestral type. The Shaman opens an ancestral gateway around a member of the group. While active, the group member cannot move and all damage against them will be delayed for a certain amount of seconds. When the gateway closes, the total damage will be dispersed evenly among the group only usable on the Shaman or a member of the Shaman's group. Hurry the Past. All healing overtime abilities on the Shaman and party members will instantly finish their durations, directly healing for the remaining amount. These abilities are then refreshed on their target as if they were just applied. Very awesome. Now let's talk about the offensive abilities for Shaman, of which there is actually a surprising amount of. Shackle of the Dust Eater. This is a bane of the ancestral type. It inflicts the enemy with the ancient dust eaters, decreasing their strength and stamina and slowing their combat resource generation for a percentage for a duration of time. Headwinds. 
another Bane, this one of the wind type. It bombards the enemy with cross-cutting winds, distracting them and reducing their aggro and assist radius. Sting of the Scorpion, another Bane, this one of the Animus type. It inflicts a venom or poison on the enemy, damaging them over time with nature damage and making them more vulnerable to nature-based attacks. And then the druid can tear that, that mob up and also, as you're going to see, there's a lot of nature-based attacks on the shaman as well. Fang of Harun. This is a curse of the Animus type. It amplifies an Animus Bane on enemy to release a surge of deadly venom into their veins, inflicting nature damage. Choking Thirst. This is a Bane of the Water type. This basically sucks the moisture from the enemy's body, damaging them over time with nature damage and making them more vulnerable to poison and disease-based attacks. Deluge. A Bane of the Water type. This one drenches all enemies in the target area with vicious moisture, slowing their movement speed and disrupting their health regeneration for a certain duration. It causes affected targets to become wet. Remember that when targets get these abilities of being wet, as in the example here, that means that the cleric casting a lightning-based smite or the druid casting lightning will be amplified damage. There is a confusing amount of integration between classes like this when you read between the lines. Reap of Coals. This is a Bane of the Fire type. This Bane sends flame forth that damages the enemy over time with nature damage and making them more vulnerable to fire-based attacks. And then the wizard can go get them. Scorched Fog. This is a Bane of the Fire type. This amplifies a fire bane on the enemy, making a cloud of black smoke that obscures their vision, slowing their attack speed by a percentage, and making their melee attacks more likely to glance or miss or lower damage for a duration. Weathering. The last bane and of the earth type, this erodes the earthen elements in the enemy's armor, reducing their armor class for an amount for a duration of time. So there you have it, the Shaman in a nutshell looks to be a buffer, debuffer type healing class and with powerful group wide heals and a very interesting resurrection ability, this is definitely a very, very, very awesome class that has some wiggle room for individual Shamans to be able to get creative and do some really cool mind bending techniques. Also, the Shaman has a very lasting appeal due to its buffs and debuffs ranging across pretty much every class it seems to give major benefits in a fight. What do you all think? Are you planning on playing a Shaman? After finding out all the details, have any of you decided to play a Shaman now but previously weren't? Thanks for joining me today and I just want to take a second to thank you, the community, the people consuming my content, the people commenting, dropping me likes, and for all of your encouraging support. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so to support the channel and to enjoy more Pantheon related content going forward. A huge shout out to the other Pantheon creators as well for all they do and for all the support they provide, as well as the entirety of the community and to other content creators. Until next time, God bless and happy gaming.